Now I've drawn the front end of an All-American 5 radio and I've drawn just enough to explain how superheterodyne or superheterodyning two frequencies together produces new frequencies and how useful that can be. Over on the left is the antenna circuit and you can see that it's a coil and there's variable capacitors across them. The innermost capacitor is the one that moves when you turn the knob and I'm going to represent the radio station frequencies with the color yellow. Now below the mixing tube we have the oscillator and it also is a tank circuit and the innermost variable capacitor is the one that moves when you turn the tuning knob and I'm going to represent the oscillator color with blue. This page is from my free ebook. I think it's page 72. And what it shows is the four major lobes when we heterodyne or mix the radio frequency from the station with the oscillator frequency and we get at the top you can see there the radio station frequency the oscill oscillator frequency and we also have the oscillator frequency plus the radio and the oscillator frequency minus the radio frequency I also want to point out in this drawing if you take a look about the middle on the left you'll see band A that is the frequency for those stations on band A now if you go down underneath where I've got a list of the oscillator frequencies band A starts at 995 kilohertz and runs to 2000 175 kilohertz. Well, that's exactly 455 kilohertz above the radio station frequencies. Now these two frequencies also produce a whole lot of other frequencies besides the four major lobes. The radio station frequency, the oscillator frequency, the plus and the minus of the two. And I'm going to use Photoshop elements to mix these two colors together. They are frequencies, but of course much higher up in the frequency spectrum. Here are two colors, the blue for the oscillator and the yellow is for the radio station frequencies. Now that gray checkerboard in the center, what that means is there's nothing there. It's transparent. And if you look in the upper right, you'll see that those two colors are on different layers. And you might glance at that when we start mixing these colors together. Now I'm going to click on the yellow and I'm going to arrow over the yellow so it mixes with the blue. Okay, now we're about ready to go into the blue. And we end up with purple. And if you take a look on the right, it's just yellow and blue. Now this mix, purple is above the two original frequencies, so this is going to be the oscillator plus the radio station frequency. Okay, here is another mix. 
arrowing over the yellow. This time we end up with red, which is below both of these colors in the spectrum. So this is going to be representing the difference between the oscillator and the radio station frequencies. As we saw in the videos, we ended up with four major lobes. At the top, the purple represents the sum of the oscillator and radio station frequencies, and the red represents the minus between the two frequencies, and that frequency is 455 kilohertz. Now these IF cans are very highly tuned high Q circuits, tank circuits, tuned to 455 kilohertz. And when that signal runs through the first IF can, we get something like this. We get almost totally 455 kilohertz plus just a little bit more, just a little of the other frequencies. Now this of course is amplified in the next tube and when it comes out this IF can for all practical purposes we only have the 455 kilohertz. Now something that also is very interesting with mixing the two original frequencies together is that the audio is transferred to the 455 kilohertz. So not only do we have the difference between the two, the amplitude modulation from the radio station is also transferred to the 455 kilohertz signal. I hope this demonstration has helped you understand how two frequencies mixing together can produce new frequencies that can be very useful. Thanks for watching.